lift your voice, appreciate him, give him glory, he's a worthy of our praise. Bless his name, exalt him. Thank him, give him glory, give him praise. Magnify the Lord, exalt him. Father, thank you. You are the powerful healer, heal powerfully today. So you be all the glory in Jesus' excellent name. Please, you may be seated. I have dominion. I want to sincerely appreciate the Almighty God, the giver of life, for the privilege to be alive and to stand before great men and women this, uh, this morning. I appreciate also my father, Bishop David Oedipo, for the privilege to serve with great people here and our first vice president, Bishop David Abioyo. I want to appreciate all our church leaders. Uh, God of heaven bless you in Jesus' mighty name. Now we'll be continuing in our serial teaching for the month. Is there no balm in Gilead? This is part 3C. Please get the teaching of the first service, the second service. They are available in CDs and um, there will be a blessing to you. Remember the word of the Lord to all this month is Jesus Christ the healer is here. Where is he? Here. And you will get your miracle here in Jesus mighty name. I take my text this morning. Remember, this is also a covenant day of restoration and special anointing service and operation Andrew Sunday. I take my text from Jewel chapter 2, 25 to 27. Jewel 2, 25 to 27. Please come with me and let's read together. Hallelujah. Jewel chapter 2, 25 to 27. Can we read one to go? And I will restore to you the years that the locusts have eaten, the cankerworm and the caterpillar and the palmer worm my great army which i send among you and ye shall eat in plenty and be satisfied and praise the name of the lord your god and that are dead wondrously with you and my people shall never be ashamed and ye shall know that i am in the midst of israel and that i am the lord your god and none else and my people shall never be ashamed you will never be put to shame. That looming shame will not come in the name of Jesus. Oh, that shame will not continue in the name of Jesus. Restoration is the antidote to shame. I will restore to you the years, the locusts, the canker worm, the caterpillar, the palmer worm has eaten. Now, when it comes to God, there is nothing lost because He can restore the years, not just years, years, including the one your grandparents lost. You can collect it <laughs> because God can restore years. I don't know what we have lost, but God will restore that today. And because of this restoration, He said, My people shall eat in plenty. Please get said. Between now and December, what you have never seen before in terms of blessing, in terms of harvest, in terms of favor, in terms of breakthrough, in terms of appointment, in terms of grace, you will see it in the name of Jesus. <laughs> what will you see from now? Greater things. Help me tell you about greater things. And my people shall eat in plenty and be satisfied. No more lack. No more nakedness. No more hunger. In the name of Jesus. And my people shall never, not just that you will not be ashamed, you will never, never, never. I divorce you from shame today. Your children will not bring you shame. Your spouse will not bring you shame. Your business will, bring, will not bring you shame. Oh, as I speak right now, somebody is facing some shame because of indebtedness. Two things are going to happen. Hear me. Number one, is either God empowers you to pay that debt or you go into, you are going to get supernatural debt cancellation. I will restore heads to you and heal you of your wound. That's what he said. I will restore. Hear me, it is the will of God to restore you. When it comes to restoration, it is the will of God. It is the will of who? God. So if you are looking for the will of God, this is it. Now, there are two major ways that God blesses us. Number one is by favor. Number two is by restoration. 
two of them have their time. Will you at this time restore the kingdom back to Israel? Acts 1 6. This is the time of restoration. Don't wait for it. The time to favor sign. Yeah, the same time has come. So there's only a time for favor. There's a time for God will not bless you outside the two. Any blessing you get, check it. It's either restoration, quit take care of your past. Or favor, quit take care of your present and your future. Even in prayer, will let us come boldly to the throne of grace that we will obtain mercy and grace to help in the time of need. Mercy take care of your past. Grace take care of your present and your future. God can bless you outside the two. And he said, this is the time of restoration. Somebody's destiny will be restored. Somebody's marriage will be restored. Somebody's reproductive organ will be restored. Somebody's sixth term will be restored. Somebody's health will be restored. A straight testimony happened just last, that testimony which had last Sunday. It happened the first Sunday of the month. Somebody had been having HIV. And um, for many years. And he came to the church and he saw that the declaration of the month is... But Jesus Christ, my healer, is here. <laughs> and he determined that I must be healed. And now, service closed. Word of God came. She went back. The, he went back. Came back from Wednesday communion service. Took the communion. And someone courage to go and do tests. HIV positive turned to negative. I speak to someone here right now. Whatever you want to become negative will become negative. <laughs> Whatever you want to become positive will become positive. Please don't look at the mouth. Oh. From five years, God has been with this mouth. And he's getting better every day. Are you getting me now? Anyway, find out. Find out. Uh, ask people in Naba. I was in Naba some time ago. Just ask them. Oh, Pastor, okay, um, just mention the name. Do you understand? So whatever comes from this mouth, don't play with it. If he says anything positive that you want negative, become negative. Get it now in the name of Jesus. If he says anything that is negative, you want to become positive, get it now in the name of Jesus. <laughs> so shall it be. Jeremiah 30, 16 to 17. All that devour you shall be devoured. How many? Including your own? Are you sure your own is inside? All that devour you shall be devoured. All your adversaries, every one of them shall go into captivity. All that prayer you shall be given for a prayer. All that spoil you shall be for a spoil. For I will restore health to you. I will restore. It is my will to do it. I will restore health to you. And heal you of your wound. Say it the Lord. Not say it Pastor Kenwa. Say it the Lord. And God cannot lie. And if I may add. And the scriptures cannot be broken. He said I will restore. So whatever you want to be restored, restore. Now hear me. There are people that speak restoration to you. God restores. Nehemiah said, restore them their land. They say, we will restore. <laughs> anyway, on Sunday, let's not uh, preempt things. On Sunday, I will tell you some things. Glory to God. <laughs> Hallelujah. But God will restore you. In the name of Jesus Christ. One day, I was privileged to serve in Sabo in Kaduna. And one of us went for outreach hospital outreach and there was a Muslim young boy who wanted to be a Christian but the parents afflicted him so that he would not be a Christian and he was lying there in the hospital dying and one of us brought him to church and told the parents now if you can allow my pastor to pray for this boy he will be whole because when they began to spend money in the hospital they, they saw their foolishness and they wanted help but it was late so they brought the boy, he couldn't walk. They carried him to two-story building where my office was. They carried him. And when he got there, prayer was made. And he was anointed with holy anointing oil. This, within 15 minutes, the same boy that was lying lifeless in the hospital, without help, looking for help, walked down two-story building by himself. Today he's called Pastor Bashir. Now hear me and hear me well. I don't know how long that generational sickness has been tormenting people. He killed your grandfather. He killed your father. And he wants to kill you. I decree it is stopped. Sir. That manipulation from satanic forces. Activities of spiritual caterers that feed you with rubbish in the night. And before you know it, you can't understand yourself. Ezra can't find it. Wire can't find it. Scan can't find it. But you know something is troubling your system. Whatever I'm buying and selling in you, I command them to be quiet today. 
be restored. What is restoration? Restoration simply is bringing back something to the original state. Bringing it to what? To the original state. In the beginning, it was not so. That thing started someday. That problem is not to, the, to be everlasting. It is to end someday. The Bible says, surely there is an end. Surely, notwithstanding, come what may. However, very, very, very certainly, most assuredly, there is an end. That sickness won't kill you. Today marks the expiry date. In the name of Jesus. Restoration is bringing back something to the original state. So when God says he will restore, he wants to bring back to the original state the way it was in the beginning. Now hear this. You can't talk of restoration except something has been stolen. Something has been withheld. Something has been denied or delayed. So whatever the devil has delayed, denied you, <laughs> you ought to marry. But somebody has gone to make some movement and before you know it, the marriage is scattered. Or maybe you took some people home to, for introduction. Before you know it, they didn't come back. Hear me and hear me well. God will restore opportunity back to you. Somebody has lost a job. Don't remain in the sack. God will restore opportunity to you. You have lost an appointment. Please don't bow down. Don't bow down. There's another opportunity. When one door closes, seven others will open. God will give you another opportunity. And I will restore the years. Please understand that every move of God is accompanied with wave of restoration. Every move of God. And we are in the center of God's move in this, in this commission. Restoration will become a thing of the past in Jesus' name. Restoration is part of the God's end, end time agenda. He said it will restore and my people will no longer be ashamed. Now this is the clinic of the greatest physician. Is there no bomb in Gilead? Is there no physician there? This is the clinic of the greatest physician. And they will never refer your case to anyone. It's a medical error for a consultant to refer a case to a dispenser. <laughs> Jesus is the greatest physician. He can't refer your case to anyone. Are you getting what I'm talking about? And the truth is that he's consulting today because he's here. When you go to hospital, you're looking for your special family doctor, three of us. I want to see Dr. John. And you don't see Dr. John, your hopes seem dash. They say, see Dr. Tony, say no. Not only Dr. John, now it's a bit high, they do me. <laughs> now, if you even see Dr. John and it, it, they prescribe drugs for you and you go to the pharmacy, you can't get the drug, your hopes see seem dash. But if the doctor is available and the drugs are available, your hope of survival is raised. Now, there is a bomb in Gilead. The balm here is the word of God. And other balms, like the anointing, will come to that. The word of God is the principal balm in Gilead. And the word of God operates in two ways. Is it okay? Please pay attention. The word of God, if you need healing, all you need is just a word. Serve so a word. A word is enough to heal you. He sent his word. His word healed them and delivered them from their destruction. He sent what? His word. Healing came. Destruction ceased. If you need help, which is the absence of sickness, total well being, you need words. My son, attend to my words. Incline thy ears to my saying. Keep them in the midst of thy heart. Let them depart from thy heart. For they are light to them that find them and head unto their flesh. Did you understand that? Did you understand it? So if you want help, eat the word always. If you want healing, a word is enough to heal you. And every word of God does two things. Now hear me. There are drugs in life. Every drug you see will, have, will perform one function. It's either it's a preventive drug or it's a curative drug. Do I have a medical personnel here? Or a pharmacist? Is it okay? There is no drug in this world that will give you the two tendencies. It's either it's a preventive drug like vaccine or it's a curative drug like is it coitem. Do you understand? Now hear this. The word of God does the two together. That's why it's the greatest bomb. It does the two. It has both creative tendencies and preventive tendencies. 
attend to my, he sent his word, his word heal them and deliver them from their destruction. That is curative. Attend to my word. Keep them in the midst of their heart. Let them not depart from your eyes. No, it is life to them that find it and head to their flesh. It's preventive. Every drug in life expires. There is no drug that acts pharmacists. No, that's what they call pharmacology of drugs. You see, it has to do with the potency and the active ingredients of drugs. Now, every drug will expire at a certain time. But the word of God does not expire. It's, it has forever potency. Say with me, forever potency. Oh Lord, thy word is settled in heaven forever. It has forever potency, sir. Anytime you use the word, it's active. Now, any drug you take over those of it will give you some negative side effects. Is it true? Even though sometimes they may not even tell you. Doctors may not tell you the side effects of the drugs. It's all about the money. I read a book one time. It's all about the money. You now see the game they play with us. The, 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 the pharmaceutical industry. The, the game they play with our lives. If you see the book, read it. It's all about the money. They plan with, with, with the, the, the regulatory bodies to be giving you things that will kill you. After some time, when, when you have killed people plenty, they say, okay, wait, we have discovered now that they can kill. They knew before. <laughs> but they don't want to get the money first. Glory to God. Now hear this. Every drug you take over those of it, we kill you. Or do have some side effect or kill any of your organs, God forbid. But hear this. If you take over those of the world, you become better. <laughs> So, I want to encourage you. The word of God is the principal balm. So, give yourself to the word. My son, attend to my word. When you attend to it, it you tend to life. Attend to my words. Now, Jesus Christ is the physician. He is the greatest healer. Why do they call him the greatest healer? There is no doctor that practices all kinds of medicine at the same time. No doctor can do that. If, if you are a consultant, you are a consultant in one area. You can't be a consultant in all. Only Jesus practiced medicine without license. Only Jesus, now hear this, only Jesus specialized in different kinds of medicine at the same time. As blind Bartimaeus, when he had problem with his sight, Jesus healed him as an optician. Ask the woman with the issue of blood, Jesus healed her as a gynecologist. <laughs> Ah, the woman that was bent down for 18 years that couldn't see the sky. Jesus healed her as an orthopedic doctor. There are doctors you call ENT doctor. Ear, nose, and, uh, nose and throat. ENT. ENT doctors. As the person Jesus healed the deaf and dumb. That Jesus operated as a specialist. ENT specialist. Are you getting what I'm talking about? As the lepers, Jesus healed them as public health practitioner. Any area of medicine you bring, that's why they call him the greatest physician. You, should I tell you more? Do you know why he's the greatest physician? He's a wholesale healer. <laughs> wholesale, he is wholesale. Luke 6 19. They came to him, he healed them all. Is your name among the all? You are not returning without sickness in the name of Jesus. You are not returning without sickness in the name of Jesus. Whatever sickness, even the one doctors call plenty big names so that your money can be big, I command you to be here. Now hear me. Somebody looked at something and said, You have one, they call the name so that your money will be big. I look at the word of God. I say, You are healed. Whose report will you believe? One day somebody came to me with a wife. All the way from Zaria, the uh, Ahmad Bello University Teaching Hospital. And it, they came with their report because they said they made a good consultant. They've been eating their money. But that day, the man said, look, sir, we don't want to be eating your money. Please go home. You cannot pregnant your wife because you have no sperm count at all. You can't pardon a child biological. So they were broken. They were going to Abuja. Somebody said, go and say, Pastor, can one day come? And I said, what is happening now? He said, Pastor, see the report. Can you see the report? I said, what did they say you don't have? He said, no sperm count. I said, how many sperm count did Mary use to conceive Jesus? How many? 
Tell me. He said, no one. What happened? The power of the highest. And the power of the highest is the anointing. You know? The power of the highest came upon her. And she conceived. The power of the highest is domiciled inside you and inside me. Now, if you are born again child of God, you have access to this power in two ways. Number one, you have the spirit within and you have the spirit upon. Do you understand? Two, that's why you are greater than anybody. You know, the Bible says the least in the kingdom is greater than John the Baptist, who is greater than all the Old Testament saints. That is why you are greater than them. There is nobody. Abraham didn't have the spirit within. Daniel didn't have the spirit within. But you carry the spirit within and you carry the spirit upon. Tongue speaking. And you say, cry, God, why me? I said, the power of the highest is domiciled in you. I will pray that he was anointed. Nine months after, the wife delivered the baby boy. <laughs> Devil talk. He lost. Now hear me. I don't know the report you have been carrying. I command every unwanted report to change now. Understand your right to total health. If you are born again child of God, you have become a lively stone. Can stone get sick? Can stone fall sick? First Peter 2 5. Ye also as lively stone are bed up as a spiritual house and holy priesthood to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God by Christ Jesus. If you are born again child of God, you are a lively stone. Whatever they throw at stone, it bounces back. Whatever sickness the devil is throwing at you right now, I command it to bounce back. If there is anyone that has entered, I command it to be rooted up. Because my Bible told me that every tree my heavenly father has not planted shall be what? Rooted up. Whatever God has not planted in you, arthritis, pine, every form of glaucoma, cataract, runny nose, runny stomach, every kind of rheumatism, high blood sugar, high blood pressure, hepatitis, ABC, whatever God has not planted in you, high fever, I command it to be rooted up now. Be healed in the name of Jesus. Be delivered in the name of Jesus. So what is in the anointing oil that he is? What is in the anointing oil that he is? Now look at this. The anointing oil is a medium for the Holy Ghost to be manifested. First Samuel 16, 13. And Samuel took a horn, horn, not vile. For Saul it was vile. For David it was horn. I don't know why. But I know there's strength in horn. Amen. No wonder David became greater than Saul. <laughs> he took a horn of oil and poured it upon David in the midst of his brethren. And what we saw upon him was the spirit of the Lord from that day forward. The spirit of the Lord, the power of the highest, came upon him from that day forward. Now hear me, by the anointing of today, the spirit of the Lord will come upon you. Do you hear me? That spirit of the Lord was the spirit that quickened the dead body of Jesus. Romans 8, 11. For if the same spirit, not the spirit that looked like the spirit, if the same spirit that raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you, he said, that same spirit, that same spirit, that same spirit, that same spirit will quicken, will enliven, will mortify, will strengthen your mortal body. Every dying organ receives strength right now. Oh, somebody they told you have hormonal imbalance, no sperm count, no sperm count, and you have ovarian cysts, whatever it is, I cause that thing right now in the name of Jesus. <laughs> For somebody that fine broad is turning to a fine boy. So the power of the highest. What else? We have seen many of such things in the first service, second service. So we encourage you to please get the teaching. We have seen the power to heal and deliver. We have seen the mystery of the fire and the fire. We have seen the spirit of the Lord that sets the captive free. Let's see further. What is in the oil that he is? Number one in this service, the power of God that destroys every yoke of sickness and disease. The power of God that destroys every yoke of sickness and disease. Isaiah 10, 27. On that day, his yoke shall be taken from off thy shoulders. His burden off thy shoulders, his yoke off thy neck. He said the yoke shall be destroyed because of the anointing. Find out from any lawyer, the word shall is a stronger legal word than will. He shall destroy. It's a word of command. It's a word of decree. It's a word of certainty. He shall destroy every yoke. 
So whatever represents a yoke, a yoke is something that will not want you to lift your head. You want to go somewhere, it keeps you at one spot. Whatever yoke or sickness that is consuming your weight, I decree that will not consume your weight again. Whatever power of the enemy that is buying and selling in your body, I command them to be quenched in the name of Jesus. By the anointing today, every yoke of sickness and disease shall be destroyed. Every yoke of pain is going now in the name of Jesus. You look for them, you shall see them no more. What is in the oil that he is? Number two, the power of God that he is all manner of sicknesses and diseases. All manner of what? Sicknesses and diseases. The difference between sicknesses and diseases. Some people may not have sickness, but they have disease. A disease is something that is not allowing your life to be at ease. <laughs> Some people have ease in their body. They have, they have sickness free body, but their pocket is not at ease. <laughs> Somebody, some people, their family is not at ease. Their spiritual life is not at ease. It's up and down. Whatever disease and whatever sickness can be healed. Matthew 10 verse 1. And when he had called unto him his twelve disciples, he gave them power against unclean spirit. Power against what? Power against what? To cast them out and to heal all manner of sickness and all manner of disease. It was separated. All manner of sickness and all manner. How many manner? Of, is your own among the manner? Then you are healed. He has given us the power to heal all manner of sicknesses and all manner of diseases. All manner, all manner. Everything that represents a manner of sickness in your life, I command them to be healed. Now hear me. How did we secure our healing? The Bible said, told us that it is by the stripes of Jesus. 1 Peter 2.24 By his strife ye were healed. Isaiah said, By his strife ye are healed. Peter said, By his strife ye were healed. Between the A and the where, somebody took the stripes. He took 40 minus 1. 39. Today, medical science have told us there are 39 categories of sickness in the world. That means every manner has been taken care of by his strife. He gave them power. To heal all manner of sickness. Every category of sickness can be healed by the power of God. And today, you are not going with any sickness in Jesus' name. How God anointed Jesus Christ with Holy Ghost and with power. Who went about doing good and healing them that were oppressed of the devil. Whatever you have lost, is it your head? Is it your money? Is it opportunity? Is it relationship? Is it, is it, is it your career? I command a restoration in Jesus' name. Amen. Somebody tried to get a visa. You lost the opportunity. God will give you another opportunity in the name of Jesus. Oh, God will connect you with them that matter in your matter in the name of Jesus. Oh, you have done some job and they are owing you. I'm owing you your gratuity, your pension, your salary. I command them to be released in the name of Jesus. As I close in this service, what do I do? What are the keys to supernatural restoration? What are the keys to supernatural restoration? Of course, we have said it here that restoration is the will of God. How many of us recognize that? Restoration is the will of God. He said, I will restore to you. I will restore. Now, the power of, the res power of resurrection is ordained for our restoration. But for you us to qualify for restoration, you must be born again. You must be what? Born again. Romans 3, 23. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. If you are not a born again child of God, you are simply a dust to be eaten by the devil. Remember, after the fall of man, God gave devil Navdak approved certificate. Heavenly approved certificate to eat dust. He said you shall eat dust. And every unborn, every unregenerated soul is a dust to be eaten by the devil. I used to tell people, if you are keeping chicken, it's done that you love the chicken. When Christmas comes, two things will happen. It's either the chicken goes to the market to fetch money or it goes to the pot to be eaten. Free of charge. That is the life of anyone that is not born again. You are a dust to be eaten by the devil. That's why you have to be born again. You have to be born again. You have to be a child of God. Remember those he foreknew, he predestinated. Those he predestinated, he called. Those he called, he justified. So God of heaven 
wants you to be saved. He wants all men to be saved. Peer pressure, things may have pushed you out of the way, but you can come back to him today. Number two, what do I need to do to qualify for supernatural restoration? Return to the Lord in full repentance. Return to the Lord in full repentance. Something may have happened that cost you the loss. Because restoration cannot be, except there was something lost or stolen. But you can return to God in full repentance. Now let's look at Job, a man that enjoyed double restoration. Because there are different kinds of restoration. Time will fail us to do that. There is double restoration, there is fourfold restoration, there is sevenfold restoration. When a thief is coming, he restores sevenfold. There is manifold restoration. So it depends on the one your faith can carry. But let's look at Job, a man that enjoyed double restoration. How did he come about that? Job 42, 1 to 6. Then Job answered the Lord and said, I know that thou can do everything, and that no, no thought can be withholden from thee. Who is he that hideth cancer from without knowledge? Therefore have I uttered that I understood not. Things too wonderful for me, which I knew not. Here I have heard of thee by the hearing of the ear, but now my eye sees thee. Wherefore I bore myself, I repent in dust and ashes. As the Lord, look at this, he repented. In dust and ashes. Look at verse 10. And the Lord turned the captivity of Job when he prayed for his friend. Also the Lord gave Job twice as much as he had before. He had double restoration. Double restoration. He had more than what he had before. Number three. Seek for revelation of the word of God in the areas of your challenge. He takes discovery for you to have a recovery. So seek for the revelation of the word of God in the area of your challenge. Somebody may enjoy sound head, but in the area of pocket is lacking. So find knowledge in that area. Somebody may have money, but it's being plagued with sickness. Find out. Somebody may have all, but it doesn't have a child. Find out. Any area you are lacking, go and look for revelation in that area. Acts 2032. Brethren, I commend you to God and to the word of his grace, which is able to build you up and give you an inheritance among them that are sanctified. There is an inheritance for them that are sanctified, but it comes by you having access to deep things of God, the revelation of God's word. Second Peter 1 Peter 1.3 According as his divine power hath given us all things that pertain unto life and godliness through the knowledge of him that hath called us to glory and virtue. So it comes through discovery, through knowledge of him. You shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. It is the truth you know that makes you free. Now hear me. God does not bless you for the things you write, for even the things you know. It is the truth you know, and you want to go ahead to apply it that brings you results. He that look at the prophet law of liberty and continue there, not being a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the work. This man shall be blessed in his deed. So it starts by knowing first. When you know it, you now apply it. That becomes wisdom. And when you apply it, wisdom is what? Hearing and doing these things of mind. When you put that to work, then liberty is established. The proof of liberty is, the proof of knowledge is liberty. If you are not free, you don't know it yet. Number four, commit to serving God and the interests of his kingdom. Commit to serving God and the interest of his kingdom. Second Chronicles 15, read 3 to 15. There was war. There was trouble everywhere. Vexation of spirit. Because they had no teaching priests, no law, no true God. So things went haywire for them. But in their calamity, they turned to the Lord. And they entered a covenant to seek the Lord. And they swore to that covenant. That anyone that will not serve God, both might be small and great, shall be put to death. And then God was found of them. And in verse 15, God gave them rest round about. There is a place of rest round about. That is no evil occurring, no adversary. Ask Solomon when you see him. So you can enjoy rest round about. But they committed to serving God and the interests of his kingdom. One of our elders here shared a powerful testimony in the second service. I was moved by it. He said he lost his car three and a half years ago. And that car has been discovered. And they want to restore it back to him. He said, no, this is not my car. You have to bring a brand new one. And they are about to give him a brand new one for restoration. Glory to God. Hallelujah. 
whatever you lost, whatever the enemy stole, whatever the enemy withheld from you, I command a restoration in the name of Jesus. But settle down. Ask him when you say he was always coming for the covenant hour. Get in, he was involved in the kingdom advancement endeavors. Get involved and God will give you rest round about. Number four. Number five now. Settle down in the house of the Lord. Settle down. Say with me, settle down. Help me tell your neighbor, settle down. Uh -huh. The worst place to stay in life is at the center of the road. Any vehicle from any side can hit you. Settle down. Don't be a one leg in, one leg out believer. So I'm coming to church now that I see moving one place or the other. Cho, 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 cho. Stay one place. Settle down. <laughs> God does not move with people. God does not have ministry of to and fro. It's only the devil that goes to and fro. So any to and fro believer, God doesn't take the person serious. Settle down. How can you be coming to this kind of church and in the night you are peeping to go somewhere? Check, check my hand. Read what you about. So my church, they are tying something on their waist. If I ask some people now, to, you will see, you'll be surprised. They are tying something. If God no go help, this one go help. Don't need it. Don't do that. Settle down with God. Settle down with God. Settle down with God. Anything you add to God, makes God to withdraw himself. Obediah 17. But upon Mount Zion there shall be deliverance, there shall be holiness, and the house of Jacob shall possess their possession. It's in Mount Zion you possess your possession. It's in Mount Zion. Mount Zion. Second, you know, second somewhere, 7 verse 10. He said, moreover, I will appoint a place for my people Israel, and I will plant them that they may dwell in a place of their own. God will give you a place of your own. And move no more. You know what I mean? Somebody is ending it. it, 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 it being, from being a tenant, you're going to be a landlord, a landlady in the name of Jesus. Uh, that's what I'm hearing. You know. don't, take, don't play with it. By what I'm saying now, it's going to happen. I will hear the testimony. Uh -huh. God will give you a place of your own. Uh -huh. He said, and I would, they will dwell in a place of their own and move no more. Neither shall the children of wickedness afflict them any more as before time. When you are in your appointed place, the sons of wickedness cannot afflict you. He said, I found David my servant. I have anointed him with the holy uh, uh, anointing oil. By him shall my hand shall be established. The enemy shall not exert upon him. The sons of wickedness shall not afflict him. In other words, they may want to, but the power to hurt is removed from them. I'll beat down his foes before him, and I'll plague them that hate him. To hate him alone is a problem. You are finished. Just for hating David. If you don't, go and study David. Though. I study David every day. <laughs> that man is too much. Do you know he has a street in heaven? Do you know that David has a street in heaven? David is the only man God swore with his holiness. God, for Abraham, God swore with himself. But for David, that is holiness that he doesn't want to tamper with. He uses it to swear to David. <laughs> Read Psalm 89 very well. How many of you have street in your village? David has street in heaven. Gate of, have you not heard of Gate of David before? Have you not read that in your Bible? Gate of David in heaven. Okay, go, you go and read your Bible. That's his street. Named after him in heaven. And you are here struggling. <laughs> Hallelujah. Settle down. Why did God do that? You know David was living in a, in a house built, built by Cedar. And one day David said, I'm not doing well. How can I be living in a house built with Cedar? And the God of Israel is dwelling in tents. He said, I will not give eye to my give sleep to my eye until I find a place for the God of Israel. And when that house was eventually built through his son, God said, This is my dwelling place. I will dwell here forever. There is no place like church in this world, though. God is not dwelling in your house. He can visit your house, but he doesn't dwell in your house. But in Zion, he dwells here. The spirit of just men made perfect are not in your house, but in Zion, they are here. Innumerable company of angels are not, they are not in your house, but they are here. Angels responsible for anything you are looking for, they are here. There is no place like church in this world. So settle down. Come with me to Psalm 132. Psalm 132. I read 13 to 16. For the Lord has chosen Zion. He has desired it for his habitation. This is my rest forever. Forever here will I dwell. For I have desired it, 
I will abundantly bless her provision. I will satisfy her poor with bread. That's why you can come here with nothing, but you, can, you are not permitted to remain with nothing. I prophesy to someone. Though your beginning may be small, your letter end shall greatly increase. Between now and the end of the year, you will see greater things in the name of Jesus. And that will be the order of the day in the name of Jesus. I will satisfy her poor with bread. I will also clothe her priest with salvation. And her saints shall shout for joy. Her saints shall shout for joy. God will give you reason to celebrate. God will give you reasons to celebrate. Hallelujah. <laughs> Number six. Receive the prophets sent to you. Receive the prophets sent to you. Look, 4, 25 to 27. But I tell you of a truth. Many widows were in Israel in the days of Elias. When the heaven was shut up. Three years and six months. When great famine was throughout all the land. But unto none of them was Elias sent. Save Save unto Sosereta, a city of Sidon, unto a woman that was a widow. And many lepers were in Israel in the time of Elisha, the prophet, and none of them was clean, saving Nama, the Syrian. Receive the prophet sent to you. Through prophets, the Bible says, by a prophet, God brought Israel out of Egypt. By a prophet, God also preserved them. Hosea 12, verse 13. He that receive a prophet in the name of a prophet will receive a prophet reward. So when God sends a prophet, receive them. Believe them. Number seven, believe God for supernatural restoration. For what? Supernatural restoration. Luke 145. Blessed is she that believeth, for there shall be a performance of those things spoken to her from the Lord. For him that is joined to the living is better than a living, uh, uh, that is hope for him. For a living dog is better than a dead lion. Ecclesiastes 9 4. So, in as much as you have the breath of God in you, there is hope for you. Don't be hopeless. When you are hopeless, you are helpless. Please, let your faith come alive. Let your hope come alive. Because God said, I will restore to you the years, the canker worm, the caterpillar has eaten. Finally, number eight, engage in a cry of faith for your desired restoration. Engage in what? In a cry of faith. This poor man cried, the Lord had and delivered him from all his trouble. Is somebody ready to cry to God today for restoration? Are you ready to cry to God? He said, when I cry to him, then my enemy shall turn back. This I know, God is for me. I will cry unto God that performed all things for me. Psalm 57 verse 2. All things, including your restoration. Are you ready to pray today? Rise on your feet and begin to pray and ask the Lord, Restore my wasted years and hear me of my wounds. Lord, restore my wasted years. Is anyone afflicted? Let him pray. Pray right now. Are you ready to take your healing, your restoration? Pray, Father, restore my wasted years. Anoint me with fresh oil today. Exalt my horn like the horn of a unicorn. Restore my head. Heal me of my wounds. He said, I will restore the years the canker worm has eaten. What is that thing you are desiring God to restore to you? To restore your marriage, to restore your children, to restore that miscarriage you had, to restore and give you a child that will stay, to restore your business, to restore your finances. Cry to God today. Lift your voice. Father, restore to me the years the canker worm, the caterpillar, the palmer worm has eaten. Cause me to be satisfied. Lord, feed me with the abundance of your house. Satisfy me with the goodness of your house. Mighty God, I ask of you today, by the anointing coming my way, let no evil come near my dwelling. Let every poisonous thing that found effect in my life be neutralized. Jesus, help me, heal me, deliver me in the name of Jesus. Restore my appointment, restore my business, restore my relationship, restore my children, Lord, restore my spouse. Let there be restoration of opportunities. Thank you, mighty God. Blessed be your name, Lord. In Jesus' glorious name, in Jesus' mighty name. Before we want to go into the anointing right now, I want to give opportunity to someone here that is not born again. Now the truth is this. You cannot have an inheritance in a family where you are not a family member. It doesn't matter how close you are. 
with them. When they want to share their inheritance, they will say, Babe, bro, wait for us. We'll have family meeting. Now, if you are not a member of the household of God, you can't take the inheritances. Healing is part of the inheritance. Healing is the children's bread. Somebody is here today, you want to say, Jesus, save me. I want to be saved. I don't want to continue this way. Things mustn't continue going, to be, going with me the way they are. I want things to go well with me. I want to be born again. I want to be a child of God. Please put your hand on your chest. Pray this prayer of salvation with me. Somebody is here. You gave your life to Jesus someday. But out of peer pressure, out of you no know, pressures of life and cares of this world, the sinfulness of riches, maybe you, you, you withdrew it back. You want to come, come back to him like the prodigal son. You want to dedicate your life to him. Do that and enjoy by dignity. What you do with God determines what he does with you. Return to him, he will return to you. Somebody is saying, I want to return to Jesus. Put your hand on your chest and pray this prayer of salvation with me. Somebody is suffering from certain evil habits. You know it. Up today, down tomorrow. You made New Year resolution, but it didn't solve the problem. That evil habit keeps bringing you down. And you want to say, I'm tired. Jesus, save me. Say to me. Put your hand also on your chest among the category of people I've mentioned. Please pray this way. Say, Lord Jesus, come into my heart. Be my Lord. Be my Savior. I believe in my heart. You are the only Son of God. You died and you resurrected on the third day. Today, from my heart and with my mouth, I confess you as my Lord and my Savior. Thank you, Jesus, for saving me. Thank you for writing my name in the good life. Thank you for restoring me back. I give you glory and praise. Thank you, Jesus, for saving me. I am a child of God. I'm a member of the household of God. Please, you pray that prayer with me. Wave your hand to Jesus wherever you are. Pray that prayer with me. Wave your hand to Jesus. God bless you. Oh, there are sincere people. Please carry your bag, your Bible, whatever you came to church with. Walk to the front of the altar here. You can't come into the front of this altar. Your destiny be altered. Come, 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 come. Run, 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 run. I will make my life. Your dwelling place, I will be your tomb in my Please come, 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 come. Come everywhere, come. You are good for Jesus. Come to where you are. Come to where you are. Come, come to him. Don't be shy. Come, 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 come. Should I not go? Come, let me help you. Come, walk out on the devil. Come to Jesus. Come to Jesus. From the last you the way you are. Come, 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 come. I will make, I will make my life your dwelling place. I will be. of you standing here, you are not going to go back. The grace to live this righteous life, receive it. Be established. Please, if I touch you, move towards my left. Move towards my left. God bless you. God bless you. Follow, follow them this way. Please, they pass some instruction to you and you'll be closing from there. 